Welcome to the first of the two previews for Fahrenheit 451, Book 2, The Sieve and the Sand. All right. In this preview, we're going to cover through three major events. Uh, in your text, it ends at about page 88, I want to say, when it says you could feel the war getting ready. And keep in mind, this war has been bubbling behind the surface through the book so far, and it will continue to do so. So, um, framing this in terms of the anti-hero's journey, where we've seen him asking questions, and that's really going to pick up speed now. And in this second section, in the part you're going to be reading for uh, this evening, there are three critical stages he's going to go through, three critical events. And it starts with him with Millie at home, then it moves to the subway journey, and then he's visiting with Faber, who is his second major teacher. Clarice was his first teacher that introduced him to questions. Faber is going to try to give him some answers, and then in the last section of the book, we'll get to uh, his final teacher, who really lays out some of uh, Ray Bradbury's main thinking in this book. All right, so we're going to take those three in stride. First off, uh, the section begins with him with Millie, and he's trying to process some of what's been going on, right, with the woman who burned herself, the conversation he had with Beatty, what happened to Clarice. He is looking for answers, and he has uh, a memory of encountering this one guy on a park bench. That's Faber, who was an old professor back when there were actually universities, and he's going to have it in his head to go talk to him. But in the meantime, the conversation with his wife is really worth listening to and taking note of. Because as we've seen in other conversations, their conversations go like this. All right? Millie doesn't really process. She doesn't really listen. So as Montag is trying to figure things out for himself, she is not terribly helpful. But in the course of the conversation, if you track the questions he's asking, that sort of points you towards where things are headed. And within the conversation, there are a couple things really worth noting. All right? When they're talking about books, Millie says there's one title that she does understand. Why that one? Right? Why is that a book that she's like, oh, yeah, I get that one? It tells you a lot about society. And then on page 73, he asks her a very important question that, again, ties into the big issues we're seeing in this society. He asks her a question about the white clown. What's he really getting at with that? All right? So that's the scene with Millie and a couple highlights there. He then goes on the subway in order to go see Faber. Pay attention to the subway journey. It is not by any means a throwaway. On it, he is trying to read a passage in the Bible, right? And it's a little hard to figure out when you're first going through it, but he's reading the lilies of the field passage in the Bible, but he's having a hard time processing it because the radio on the subway is blaring constantly. It's blaring an ad for toothpaste, Denim's Dentifrice. So you have a fight between the lilies of the field and this product, and he's trying to focus. And while he is trying to focus, he remembers an experience with a sieve and some sand. And a sieve is just a, a funnel, a sifter, that uh, if you're panning for gold, it sifts out all the bits. And I use it when you're making pasta. There's a colander sort of thing. So you have a sieve and you have sand being poured in it. The question is, what is the sieve and what is the sand? How does that compare as sort of a symbol of what he's trying to do on the subway, and what he's trying to figure out. And I will tell you that his thought about how he can make it work is exactly wrong, and it's because he's part of that society. All right. So he's trying to figure that out. Watch what's happening with the other people on the subway, how they react, and how often the language used in this scene deals with metal and hard things. And uh, it's another scene where you have the machine almost alive attacking him for what he's doing. 
right? So eventually he will get out of the subway and then he goes to Faber. Faber, this old man, there's a lot to watch for with him, all right? Montag comes in and he's sure he knows what's wrong with society. He's sure that there's one thing missing, books. That's it. That's what's caused all the problems. But Faber clarifies this and says it is not books. Why not? He will lay out the three things that he says society is really missing. Read that carefully. Really track what those three, three things are. All right. And how they play a role in everything we've seen. All right. Uh, one way to look at this as a side note, we've seen two people who are very well read. Beatty clearly reads a lot. Faber reads a lot. One way to look at this is Montag has two possible paths ahead of him. And it's unclear which way he will go. All right? Um, so the last part of this before he leaves Faber, and that's where you'll end the reading for this section, is he really wants Faber to help him. But Faber doesn't want to do it. Watch what Montag's hands do. All right, as we're going through the book, just track these times when his hands do something when he's not paying attention. They grabbed books at one point in the woman's house. You're going to see his hands acting on their own. Later on, the third teacher will explain why hands are so important. But if you're tracking these things, it'll really help you follow along. All right. Uh, also, Faber says a lot about materialism, the need for stuff. We've seen it in Millie. We've seen how Clarice wasn't part of that. Materialism is another big warning in this book that could make a great essay. If you track how dangerous they say having stuff is, mixing up items for people, replacing people with items, making them disposable. Right? We've seen that a few times. Uh, you know, when Montag threw up on his rug, what was Millie worried about? The carpet. Okay? So those are some of the big things. From here, he's going to get, he's going to leave Faber. He's going to go home where Millie and some of her friends are having a little TV party, and he's going to screw up that TV party real good. All right? So that leads you through the core stuff for this first phase of your reading. Again, Take some advice from Clarice. Take it slow. Make sure you're focused on the reading. Don't have the seashell radios in your ears while you're doing it. And uh, we will build this into our discussions right after break. Good luck. And if you have questions, ideas, thoughts, post them in the discussion area. Post them in your survey responses. And, of course, bring them to class for us to share. Thanks.